who is presenting ayush good morning sir morning ayush put your video on uh sorry yes sir if good morning vk sir morning morning start yeah we can start uh good morning everyone i'll be presenting today's case so my case is a 76 year old male resident of chikni alwar farmer by occupation uh presented with chief complaints of vomiting uh am i audible sir yes 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 a uh, patient admitted with chief complaints of vomiting multiple episodes 6 days back complaints of chest pain 6 days back and complaints of shortness of breath since last 6 days history of present illness patient was apparently all right 6 days back he had sudden bouts of vomiting gastric contents uh, 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 the emitters was mo mostly gastric contents with uh, which was around 100 ml it was associated with mild epigastric discomfort and nausea there was no evidence of blood in vomit following which he developed severe left sided chest pain it was more in the lower chest it was sharp in nature and continuous it was non radiating it worsened on deep breathing patient complained of shortness of breath shortly after it was persistent even on rest and there was no significant relief with change in position there is no history of diaphoresis there is no history of cough there is no history of fever no history of melina hematochezia or hematemesis there is no history of recent trauma there is no history of loss of appetite or loss of weight and there is no history of heartburn or regurgitation past history patient has no known comorbidities no history of any prior surgical intervention and no history of similar complaints in the past personal history he takes a mixed diet had normal bowel and bladder habit and there is no known allergy family history was not significant treatment history the patient was taken to a local hospital admitted and taken on iv medications and auto support he underwent blood he underwent blood investigations followed by x ray and a ct scan following which a chest tube was inserted on the left side for collection around 1 liter of dirty blood collection was done immediately patient was started on oral liquids uh, and soft diet the very next day the swelling was following was painful oral contents were seen in the chest tube bag patient was again made nbm and referred to a higher center uh can i summarize sir history yes yes carry on carry on please a uh, 76 year old man uh, man with no no comorbidities presented with sudden sudden bouts of vomiting four days back followed by left sided chest pain shortness of breath and he underwent evaluation uh, he underwent evaluation and left sided uh, left sided chest tube was inserted elsewhere okay go back to your uh, start from the beginning yes sir and keep keep analyzing keep uh, describing uh so my uh, patient presented with uh, uh, sudden uh, go to, go sudden to the, go to the presenting go to the first slide yes yes, yes. so as soon as you hear this what do you think what do you make out uh so my first uh, given the elderly uh, uh, the uh, scenario in an elderly male uh, with uh, vomiting chest pain and shortness of breath first my uh, my first diagnosis uh, provisional diagnosis would have been a cardiac issue uh or a cardiac issue and then uh, i would have considered an abdominal uh, 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 abdominal diagnosis likely uh, so Hello. yeah okay we are not physicians but is vomiting multiple episodes of vomiting usually so when you are saying cardiac obviously you are meaning coronary artery disease angina or uh, myocardial infarction yes sir so is is uh, vomiting a predominant symptom there uh, no sir it won't be a predominant symptom but it can be a part of the uh, uh, symptom because of the pain and other things vomiting can manifest yeah so it is important to know that what came first yes sir. isn't it if the chest pain came first and then the patient had a few episodes of vomiting then i agree with you that you will think more of a cardiac cause but if if it all started with vomiting and say after some time of vomiting he felt chest pain and shortness of breath and that is why i don't know whether you mentioned about it or not the radiation of pain to the left arm that also is important because that is a feature uh, of uh, 
uh, and then the the site of pain whether it is left sided pain or whether it is upper precordial pain yes sir so all these things will differentiate between pain of card may differentiate not necessarily all cases uh, may differentiate between cardiac origin of pain and abdominal origin of pain yes sir okay so let us for the time being because we don't want to go into medical discussion but these are the points which you should mention that what is the exact site of because here you have mentioned left sided pain and also whether it is left lower chest pain or whether it is precordial upper chest pain the classical pain of angina or myocardial infarction is precordial upper chest upper. pain which is radiating to left arm isn't it and the pain would come first and you did mention about diaphoresis that is also good okay so go back so when you have these symptoms that vomiting followed by chest pain and shortness of breath what comes to your mind uh vomiting chest pain and as uh, a so classically it is uh, with an elderly male i would have still go, gone with the uh, case of uh, either uh, case of gastritis or severe uh, reflux disease uh, then I, esophageal may i interrupt sir but why would gastritis cause chest pain and shortness of breath if it is simple I, gastritis uh severe pain can uh, cause breathlessness sometimes and uh, chest yeah, pain that again will retro, that will be retro that will be retro sternal pain so now now right. go on to your next slide where yes. you have gone into the details of the pain so it is severe left sided chest pain yes sir uh, then again the differential of uh, esophageal perforation uh, does come to mind bora ave syndrome barotrauma is most commonly presenting with a uh, so you should you should come out with that statement that this is the classical history of a spontaneous uh, esophageal perforation bora ave syndrome that yes. about of vomiting followed immediately after by severe chest pain and shortness of breath this is the classical presentation of esophageal perforation severe reflux esophagitis would cause retrosternal burning pain usually it would not cause shortness of breath unless you say that the, there is so much of regurgitation of gastric contents that the patient has aspirated and then there is but that would be associated with a severe bout of coughing if there is so much of aspiration it will be associated with coughing and then since there is no past history or previous history of uh, suggestive of acid dyspepsia it is unlikely that suddenly the patient will develop such such severe refluxes so you have to explain each and every symptom taking the entire story into account isn't it a patient who has no previous history of uh, gastritis or reflux esophagitis suddenly presents with severe vomiting uh, uh, sorry episodes of vomiting severe chest pain and shortness of breath this is the classical presentation of boerhave syndrome next slide the negative history yes so just explain why you asked all these symptoms the uh, diaphoresis again given an elderly male patient diaphoresis is a common uh, sign of a cardiac disease angina and other myocardial infarctions there is no history of cough that's uh, as we discussed i wanted to rule out that it whether it is a pulmonary pathology uh, any pulmonary pathology associated with uh, shortness of breath there is no history of fever i wanted to see whether during this post op period whether the patient had any prior infection or post or post this uh, onset of symptoms has he developed any signs of infection or not uh, there is no history of malina hematochezia and hematemesis again to uh, rule out any uh, uh, vomit vomitus a cause of vomitus can be multi, there can be multiple causes of vomiting uh, if there is any uh, elderly male with an obstruction or like symptoms which has caused vomiting or an alcoholic male uh, although the patient doesn't give a history of alcohol many a times alcohol can uh, cause uh, alcoholic liver disease can call malina hematosis or hematemesis again uh, hematochezia because i wanted to see whether the vomiting has resulted into some internal bleed uh, the tear or the suspected perforation has uh, resulted into some internal bleeding as well there is no history of recent trauma there is no history of loss of appetite or a loss of weight to rule out any ongoing processes uh, long chronic process which led to uh, vomiting and there is no history of heartburn or regurgitation because uh, a lot of patients with uh, borave syndrome do uh, are suspected to have uh, underlying gerd disease 
So, um, if, if you're talking of GI bleed, I think you should mention hematemesis first rather than melina and hematochezia, isn't it? Yes. If you have an yes. esophageal pathology, especially a spontaneous uh, perforation, um, then hematemesis is more likely rather than uh, melina and hematochezia is almost uh, unlikely unless there is massive uh, upper GI bleed. Uh, similarly, in a six days history, history of loss of appetite or loss of weight takes a low priority. He has no previous symptoms. And this is not the presentation of either esophageal or GE junction malignancy that patient presents with vomiting, severe chest pain and uh, shortness of breath. So it is a low priority. The only reason you can give for asking this is that he's a 76 year old gentleman. So at the back of your mind, you would like to keep malignancy, but very, very unlikely. The history of heartburn or regurgitation probably should come on the top. So even negative history when you are presenting, unlike an MBBS student who presents it from head to toe, your presentation of negative history should be in order of importance, in order of relevance. What is relevant? Okay. Right. Next. May I interrupt, sir? Yeah, yeah, Rajin, please. Yeah, basically, you, you, this long duration of history of six days without deterioration and only with the presenting symptoms is unlikely. You need to probe this a lot more because we prefer to make a diagnosis as is or within 48 hours. So six days is like a virtual death sentence for the patient. Uh, the, uh, sir, uh, the patient did uh, seek intervention elsewhere and was uh, put uh, was uh, intervened with a chest tube. So that might have caused a uh, relief. Is that an ideal management of a Boerhaar syndrome? Is that what uh, you would do? No. On uh, prime... Uh, Sir, I would like to go with a proper CT scan to diagnose the uh, perforation, the site that of perforation. They have done. That they have done and uh, they have arrived at a diagnosis uh, which is different from what it actually is. Because until the patient ate food and it came out through the chest tube, they didn't make a diagnosis yes, of sir. esophageal perforation. Yes, so, uh, are you going to present all those x-rays and CTs in, in the imaging? Uh, yes, yes, sir, I do have them. Yeah, okay. Well, uh, yeah, did the patient not deteriorate at all? Uh, no, sir, because the intervention was done within, uh, say, 12 hours of the presenting symptoms. They suspected it to be a case of uh, uh, plural, uh, basically a thoracic infection they, uh, is what the attendants were telling, and they inserted a chest tube. They did not suspect a esophageal perforation as such, and hence the patient was started on oral diet the very next day. Yeah. Another and thing is... Yes. Another thing Let's is, see the management history, because I think that would answer Dr. Rajin Desai's question that... How is it that we are not talking of six days? He's right, but uh, probably some intervention has been done in between. So go to the next slide, management history. Yes, Rajan, please. Yeah, that's it, sir. So here you should mention the day, that after how many days of illness, because that, that answer will then come, that whether he went there on second day, third day, or whatever it is. Okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So these all in, these interventions were done within the twelve hours of the presenting symptoms. And so, do you agree with the management, uh, sir? The uh, diagnosis might have been wrong, but uh, at the outright, if the patient presents with the, as we can see, one around one liter of collection was there, and it was there, and the patient. Uh, had the uh, diagnosis been made, I, I would have gone with probably a surgical intervention for a proper lavage and drainage if the patient was. Because within 24 hours, if the diagnosis was made, we could have intervened with the repair. If okay. the we, we will go into the management that how we would or you would have managed. But uh, uh, do you agree with the management which they did? Uh, Especially the last yeah. part that patient was started on oral liquids and soft diet next day. Uh, so here I would not uh, agree with them because they missed the diagnosis and they, uh, but uh, after once they found that it was a fistula, basically a uh, esophageal fistula, they did uh, get the patient on NBM and refer to a higher center. Yeah, because obviously when they have put a chest tube and it has drained dirty uh, uh, fluid, dirty colored collection, which means that there has been uh, contamination with the uh, uh, enteric contents. So on, on day one, on the very next day to start oral probably was not correct. Next. 
Okay. Uh, examination. General examination. Patient is conscious, alert, well oriented to time, place, and person. He is moderately built and nourished. BMI was twenty five point seven kg per meter square. Uh, patient was a uh, febrile. Pulse was eighty six per minute, normal rhythm. Respiratory rate was twenty five per minute. Saturation was ninety five percent on two liters of uh, O two support. Blood pressure was one twenty by seventy mm. There was no evidence of anemia, jaundice, cyanosis, fetal edema, clubbing, and JVP was not raised. There was no palpable lymphadenopathy. On abdominal examination, on inspection, abdomen was flat. Abdominal is centrally placed. All quadrants are moving well with respiration. There was no scar marks, dilated veins, or visible peristalsis. Hernial or orifices appear normal with no visible cuff pimples. External genitalia appears normal and spine. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry, I have by mistake muted you. Yes, sorry. Yes, sir. On palpation, abdomen was soft, non-tender, no palpable lump was there, no organomegaly. Liver span was eleven centimeters. For rectal examination, no blood staining or menina was present. Respiratory examination. Uh, movement on inspection. Movement on the left side of the chest was less as compared to the right. Trachea appeared centrally placed. There was no intercostal end drawing. ICD was seen in the left fifth intercostal space in the mid axillary line. Active column movements were present, and around 500 ml purulent collection was noted in the ICD bag. On auscultation, air entry was decreased in the left lower zones with referred sounds from the ICD uh, audible. Fine crepitations were present. Cardiovascular system and central nervous system were essentially within normal limits. Go back to your chest examination. So good that you have done and described a detailed chest examination in all patients with possible esophageal disease. That means uh, any patient who is presenting with dysphagia, symptoms of reflux, patient like this. Instead of just saying respiratory system is normal, you must describe it in detail, even if it is normal. That shows that you have looked at because in in esophageal diseases you will have findings in chest rather than in the abdomen. But something is missing here in the chest examination. You have done inspection. You have done palpation. What uh, have you sir. not done? The percussion. You have done percussion. There is no percussion note described. So the uh, uh, classical findings of uh, pleural effusion would be that there is less movement and expansion on that side. There will be dull note on percussion, and the breath sounds will be decreased. So many a time when you describe. Say a malignancy. The students say that no added sounds. Added sounds are present only in chest infection or consolidation. In malignancy, if even if there is a lung metastasis, chest examination will usually be normal. It is the malignant pleural effusion which gives rise to findings, which are decreased uh, expansion both on inspection and palpation, dull note on percussion, and decreased breath sounds rather than added sounds. Yes. You didn't mention uh, a pleural rub or evidence to suggest pericarditis, pleuritis, because dirty fluid has uh, drained from the chest. Six days back, he yes, had sir. vomiting. So, was the vomiting associated with abdominal pain? Because uh, even sir. acute fluid collection due to pancreatitis can cause a similar kind of symptom profile. So there was no prior abdominal pain. However, during the bouts of vomiting, patient did have some uh, nausea and abdominal upper abdominal discomfort. But as such, there were no preceding symptoms of uh, abdominal pain. Yeah. So mention a pleural rub and also subcutaneous emphysema. You have not made a note in any of the findings. Uh, sir, uh, yeah, actually, please. I missed it. Uh, subcutaneous emphysema was absent. I could not. Uh, Exam uh, find it on the uh, find it on examination. Uh, Where sorry, did you palpate? Uh, sir, I palpated in the uh, left uh, in the uh, on the left See, side of the chest. Because the intercostal neck, tube um, that has been placed itself will cause some amount of subcutaneous emphysema in that region. You should palpate in the neck, back, abdomen, okay. and chest. Yes, sir. I did palpate, and there was no. Uh, uh, I think a very very important point which Dr. Desai has mentioned that if you are thinking of an esophageal perforation, whether Boerave or malignant or uh, corrosive, then uh, you must very carefully palpate the neck, especially because the mediastinal air will then go into the neck. 
So uh, you have to specifically mention in the general examination that there is no subcutaneous emphysema in the neck. So these are small, small points, which if you mention, they give you a plus point because then the examiner knows that you have thought of uh, what are the consequences of the possible uh, disease or diagnosis which you are thinking of. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, carry on. Uh, sir, again to summarize, a uh, seventy-six-year-old male with no known comorbidities presented with sudden on uh, sudden onset. Yeah, sorry, I, sorry to interrupt. I noticed a discrepancy. Initially, you said six days back, and in the summary, you are saying four days back. This should not happen. Uh, sorry, sir, it's a mistake. Yes. Sorry. You should uh, not contradict your own uh, statements. Yes, sir. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Uh, sudden onset bouts of vomiting six days back, followed by left sided chest pain and shortness of breath. The underment evaluation and left sided ICD was inserted elsewhere. On examination, found to have decreased air entry on the left side with coarse crepitations with ICD training purulent contents. So, uh, my diagnosis for this patient would be uh, esophageal. Actually, now, now in, the, in the summary, you can add that also that he when he took orally, the food came out in the chest tube. That is a confirmatory. Evidence that there is a esophageal uh, perforation. Yes. That also is a very important point in the summary. Yes, sir. Hmm. So, so my diagnosis would be a case of esophageal perforation with a uh, controlled esophagocutaneous fistula with uh, left sided ICD in situ. Esophagocutaneous. Plurocutaneous okay. fistula. It is not yes. a esophagocutaneous fistula. Cutaneous is because you have put a chest tube. It is the esophago plural fistula yes, with plural uh, effusion or empyema, you can say. And uh, you have to add that this is a spontaneous esophageal perforation. You have to say that you are thinking of a Boyer-Haver syndrome. Yes, sir. So suppose the patient sir. came to you the first time. What would you have done? So my first uh, would be to uh, first optimize the patient. Uh, I would have done an X-ray. What is optimization? Day. What is optimization? So uh, first to look for uh, 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 basically look uh, look for air airway breathing and circulation. I would have first checked. There is the a difference between optimization and resuscitation yes, and stabilization. Optimization is of a patient who has to be planned for an elective surgery, but he or she has multiple comorbidities. So that is what is called optimization. A patient who comes in shock or hemodynamic instability, you stabilize the patient. A patient who come or you patient who comes with the say fluid and electrolyte imbalance or sepsis, that is called resuscitation. So this is not optimization. He, he must have at that time he must be in sepsis. Depending yes, on sir. when he presented, he must be uh, even be uh, dehydrated, hypotensive, tachycardic. So that is resuscitation yes, and stabilization. Yes, carry on. Uh, I would have resuscitated the patient, and uh, first, my first investigation would have been uh, X-ray chest. Uh, X-ray chest. So what uh, measures? Uh, what, what measures will you take before you investigate? What 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 all would you have done? He came to you in the emergency, say 24, 48 hours after the episode. What all would you have done, or would you have told your resident to? May I interrupt? Uh, yes, Rajan, please. Yeah. It's very important in a 76-year-old man, whether he has uh, built-up teeth, or that is uh, dentures, does he have dentures? Has he missed his dentures recently? Because denture perforation is one of the commonest perforations in elderly. Yes, sir. So, did you take history? Did you look examine his abdomen, uh, mouth to look for any dentures? Uh, no, sir. I did not specifically look for the dentures. That, that has to be looked for. It's a common cause of perforation, esophageal perforation. Yes, sir. Yeah, and, and uh, I think very important point which we all missed initially. And similarly, if it is a child, then and, uh, swallowed uh, or ingested uh, foreign body. The yes, so what would you do? To resuscitate this patient, I would have first uh, secured an IV line, got, uh, got him on IV fluids, and uh, uh, IV fluid, I would have uh, inserted a catheter since this is an elderly male and uh, monitored for urine output as well. 
uh, once his vitals have been stabilized, I would have shifted him for an X-ray. What What else? Patient uh, uh, who has esophageal perforation, pleural effusion, empyema. What? Sorry. Uh, uh, immediately start him on a, a broad spectrum antibiotic. Uh, okay. Or uh, oxygen. You will oxygen, start yes, him sir, on, uh, very likely that he will be having low saturation, hypoxemia. So these are things which can be quickly done. Yes, sir. Hmm. Okay. If I say if I say it is a gastric torsion or a gastric bodulus, how how do you counter my statement? Because this is how even gastric torsion can present, and hiatus hernia is more common than Boerhaave syndrome. Uh, with the uh, hiatus hernia presenting, uh, uh, there would have been some preceding gastric symptoms. Gastric bodulus. What are the symptoms of gastric bodulus? So gastric volvulus usually would uh, have uh, preceded with the first pain because of uh, lower left side, uh, lower left side uh, chest pain most commonly because of the torsion and the repeated uh, entire repeated upper movement of the stomach. There would have been uh, a prior history of early satiety, uh, early sat uh, early satiety, postprandial bloating, and other things would have been present. Sir. And uh, had it uh, short, uh, shortness of breath, uh, unless it has uh, gone into necrosis or a perforation because of the long standing volvulus, would not have been presented because patient would have gotten accustomed, uh, accustomed to the repeated. If it was a long standing. The important uh, thing uh, is, in addition to vomiting, there will be dysphagia. At some point in the history, you will have significant dysphagia because when torsion, both the esophagus and the duodenum are blocked. Especially either organoaxial or mesenteria axial, it does not make a difference. Okay. So dysphagia being absent is an important symptom here. So if you have a hiatus hernia and gastric volvulus, the part of the stomach which is in the hiatus hernia, the paraesophageal hernia, if that undergoes uh, ischemia, gangrene, necrosis, and perforation. It will behave like a esophageal perforation. It can uh, uh, rupture into the left pleural space. So, so uh, that is the point which Dr. Desai was mentioning. But making a diagnosis of gastric volvulus without a history of dysphagia, that is the point against. Okay. Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah. So resuscitation done. Now, how will you investigate this patient? Uh. I would first uh, get an EC and an X-ray for this patient because he is an elderly man with again chest pain. Very so good. Very good. Him. Although although we are not thinking of coronary disease, but since ECG can be done then and there only in a 76-year-old gentleman who presents with chest pain, irrespective of what your clinical diagnosis is, ECG must be done and it can be done in a minute on the bedside there then and there only before a chest X-ray is done. So that is very important. In fact. I always say that any patient in whom you are considering a diagnosis of acute pancreatitis, irrespective of the age of the patient, a chest X-ray and ECG is a must because there are instances where a chest or a cardiac event can be misdiagnosed or misinterpreted as acute pancreatitis. So very, very good point. Yes. Uh, what do you expect to see in the chest X-ray? Chest X-ray, I would see a left lower side uh, uh, a possible... I would uh, suspect to have. Uh, I would suspect uh, that the patient would have a left-sided pleural effusion. There would be a media widening of the mediastinum can be there. There would be hydronemothorax. Uh, there could be a uh, so that uh, air uh, nemo mediastinum can also be uh, seen. And uh, mediastinal emphysema, mediastinal air. You can even see Answer. air going up in the neck in the subcutaneous. Neck, subcutaneous emphysema can also be. Yes. So, do we have the chest X-ray of this patient? Yes, sir. Uh, this is the chest yes. X-ray on first chest X-ray on presentation. So, mm -hmm. this is a X-ray chest uh, uh, PA view of the of the patient. Firstly, I, I see that there is a deviation of the trachea to the right side. There is a mediastinal shift is present. There is an obvious pneumothorax with hydrothorax on the left side. There is mediastinal widening can be seen. Uh, uh, mediastinal widening can be seen. 
there is a thin uh, line of air seen just uh, here uh, along the cardiac border which might possibly suggest a pneumomedia stenum uh, there can are some out? can you point out the pericardiac air so this mm, i'm not uh, maybe uh, this yeah so and, it shows uh, and can you point out the uh, pneumothorax so this yes there is a large amount of air there is large amount of fluid there is parenchymal uh, opacification or opacities on the left side even on the right side probably right side is okay. yes, and there is deviation of the media uh, media to the right yes sir okay then uh Follow, uh, because it is a uh, media sure whether uh, uh, is there some amount of sub diaphragmatic air also is the dome of okay. diaphragm elevated I, i'm not sure no the left left side no, no probably that is the rib what this rib is side also that is continuing that is the yes yes yeah please carry on so okay after this chest x ray what will you do so my first thing would be to get the uh, icd inserted for this patient because he yes, is having very good no, you should not at this stage you should not say i will do a ct scan because the diagnosis is obvious there is an esophageal uh, perforation taking the history and the examination and this into account and there is a large amount of uh, pleural fluid so first thing is to place a chest tube yes sir yes sir yes okay so chest tube place then the so, uh, once the chest tube has, uh, is uh, uh, is placed i would uh, note for the um, uh, kind of and the amount of content that is present it would uh, uh, guide me to as to uh, prepare for the amount of sepsis or the contamination that is present in the thoracic cavity uh, then i would uh, send a uh, contamination of, uh, for culture as well if uh, any uh, uh, for culture as to uh, guide for the future antibiotic treatment i would also simultaneously get basic blood investigations uh, done for this patient to look for tlc counts and other things uh, tlc counts uh, and uh, tl let's see, let's see the reports so these were the investigations first uh the first investigation was uh, 4th of uh, june was done on the day of uh, the symptoms uh, presenting symptoms itself so uh, as we can see the hemoglobin has more or less uh, remained stable counts were 8200 they have now uh, and again within normal limits of 6200 now platelets were 80000 on the day of presentation at, uh, they are 150000 sodium was 133 135 potassium was higher on uh, the day of presentation which was uh, more or less uh, stabilized now urea was 106 and creat was 2.5 which is uh, which is now 38 and 1.1 which uh, leads me to suspect that patient was in uh, probably in dehydration or uh, dehydration at that time lft is largely normal and i know it's pretty normal so how how does the timing of presentation of the patient with a suspected esophageal perforation affect or decide your plan of investigation and plan of management when would you do a ct scan uh, sir uh, once the patient is uh, had uh, once after the icd tube the patient were once the patient is stabilized i would go for a ct scan because in the early period if the contamination is less a primary repair could be attempted given the margins of the perforation are healthy and amenable for repair what do you mean by early so within 24 hours is so what usually uh, accepted criteria so is there a situation where you would not do a ct scan uh so i would like to go for a ct scan in all cases to document the with a contrast to document the site of leak uh, collection type of collection because that would be a better uh, better guide than a, a plain x ray but you have already placed an icd so pleura has been drained suppose the patient comes after 3 days and at that time as you said that you will not plan for a primary repair you have seen lot of air lot of fluid in the pleural cavity you place a icd and you see some food material coming out so why do you want to do a ct 
now when you are plan not planning to do anything else except plural drainage we'll see to give you some extra information so any other uh, corresponding pathologies for elderly male patient associated pathology may be a distal malignancy obstruction or maybe a some food particle or foreign body that might have caused the perforation those things may be ruled out with a proper ct scan sir okay i mean i i can uh, accept that but also it is important that what you have drained is only the pleural cavity there could be a collection yes, in the mediastinum uh, also isn't it yes, so yes, that sir. could be the yes. reason for continuing sepsis so i think uh, uh, there would be very few situations where you would say that uh, you don't want or you don't need a ct scan i think uh, this is one situation where all, in almost all cases you would like to do a ct scan let's see the ct sir this was a hrct thorax which was done in the primary uh, uh, primary center where the patient was evaluated first it was done prior to the uh, icd insertion uh, as we can see sir again uh, signs of new uh, uh, pneumothorax are present with a large collection in the left uh, left lower zones and signs of pneumonitis are also uh, present with uh, inflammatory fat standing here and in this area sir there is some collection the in fluid, the media the fluid is not the fluid is not confined to the lower zone it is going right up to the right up to the of the chest yes sir and uh, there is a uh, some amount of collection in the pericardial region as well in the mediastinum and uh, there is no obvious subcutaneous emphysema seen at least in the in these pictures sir. so again what is important uh, to see is because pleural cavity you are anyway going to drain or you must have already you should have already drained what is important to see is that how much is the inflammation or collection into the mediastinum so oh. that may not get drained by the icd only so show us the esophagus uh, from above downwards and show where is the possible site of perforation if we can make it out uh so this is a thin strand of air which uh, as uh, esophagus appears to be collapsed here in, in this case and it is uh, this small speck of air i would suspect it, uh, it to be esophagus just uh, uh, adjacent to the aorta here and uh, you can see the yeah, so uh, if you see the last cut on the second row you can see that uh, air vertical uh, air which is uh, to the left of trachea you should also comment that trachea is obviously deviated to the left as we saw on the chest x ray but from there you start seeing this air which is best seen in the first cut of the third row and then all the other cuts which looks like extra luminal layer okay. can you make it out the last cut of the second row last one yes just to the left of the trachea see that vertical black thing obliquely mm -hmm. running yes that looks like yes, extra sir. luminal layer because this doesn't con iske pehle jitna dikh raha tha that could be in the lumen but this definitely and then the next so many cuts whatever air you see black to the left and behind the trachea that is all extra luminal layer yes sir so that probably is the uh, uh, perforation but operation we don't know where it is but this is definitely extra and there doesn't seem to be much mediastinal inflammation the mediastinum looks all right there is not much collection or stranding in the mediastinum so that is a favorable thing this means that just by putting icd you will be able to control the sepsis in this case what else would you have done uh, in the ct which probably they haven't done an oral contrast of uh, water soluble yeah they haven't given oral contrast i don't think do we see any oral contrast in the stomach no sir no sir they have not done they were not suspecting yeah, so a basic not, uh, yeah. yeah pathology so that that could have identified the site of perforation and the size of perforation to some extent yes, which is important only if you are planning surgical management if the yes, patient sir. is coming late and you are not planning immediate surgical management that is not significant but if you are planning to go for an early repair of the perforation then it is important because that would decide your access and that would uh, uh, give you an idea 
where you are going to expect the perforation. No, he said he said I C D. He said I C D. Is it coming or it is somewhere else? Yes, he he said that I will place the I C D first and then the C T. Okay, so this is on which day? So the same day, within same day. Uh, yes, sir. Okay, so what what would be your plan of definitive management? So you put an ICD, you have done the CT. Obviously, if you had placed the ICD, CT would show much less findings yeah. than this. But uh, the telltale evidence of esophageal perforation would be there. So what would be your plan of management? Now we come to what are the principles of management of a spontaneous esophageal perforation. Uh, as we uh, discussed that the first thing would be to uh, stabilize uh, resuscitate the patient stabilize uh, resuscitate, uh, resuscitate the patient and establish a proper diagnosis yeah now we have discussed that so there is no need to repeat that now i'm asking you what are the principles of definitive management of an esophageal perforation there are uh, only two options one is to go in other is to wait uh, yes, manage conservatively so how do you decide what to do what are the factors which decide so first thing uh, would be uh, that uh, um, uh, to quantify sepsis whether the counts are raised whether the patient has fever whether the uh, contamination is quite first is the duration the duration. most important whether... factor is the duration after how much time uh, the patient has presented to you because that to a great it is like any other perforation like peptic perforation like bowel perforation what you do depends on the duration the perforation presentation interval and as you earlier said that usually most people will say 24 some may extend it to 48 depending on the condition so most first thing you should mention is the time interval duration. second is the septic status of the patient which will be indicated by how do you assess the septic status of the patient uh sir so, uh how the vitals are whether the patient is in shock or not then tlc counts uh, uh fever if present or not uh, so these yeah. are these so all, the, all the parameters like fever tachycardia tachypnea desaturation hypoxemia okay. uh, uh, your uh, other Hypotem parameters like counts if you believe in doing the in inflammatory markers uh, all those things so you uh, uh, take into account the septic status of the patient. Third, uh, third would be, sir, uh, if I am able to isolate the site, uh, identify the site of the perforation and the length of the length of the perforation. If I can, identify how does site? And, how does site affect your management? Uh, and what do you mean by site? So whether it is an cervical thoracic or a uh, mid thoracic or a lower thoracic uh, perforation because cervical perforations are I mean, uh, have better prognosis uh, because they are likely to be more contained with less contamination uh, and uh, mid uh, mid and lower thoracic uh, perforations uh, uh, usually do uh, tend to have more uh, contamination thus leading to uh, pulmonary complications are more so uh, early stage repair might not be that easy in these patients. What about abdominal part? Intra-abdominal? Intra-abdominal. Uh, uh, if uh, intra-abdominal uh, intra perforations, uh, if uh, conditions are good, we might go in repair with uh, repair or yeah, a segment. So they, are, uh, segment. Uh, they are more likely to need surgical yeah. intervention as opposed to uh, non-surgical uh, management. Okay, so duration, septic status, site, and then as you said, size. That how much is the perforation? Because a small perforation with no or little contrast leak, that is why contrast is important. You would probably uh, tend to manage conservatively. But if it is a large perforation, uh, you may, although that is not the criterion, because a small perforation early, you may like to go in and repair. On the other hand, even a large perforation, if the patient presents late as uh, features of uh, pulmonary and uh, systemic sepsis, you would not like to operate. So size is usually not an important consideration. 
what else would you have done in addition to doing the ct ict nutrition nutrition uh, yes the nutrition would be an important thing uh, once uh, if uh, the so there are two ways that we can uh, ensure nutrition either uh, and uh, nutrition early uh, early period if the patient is stable we may go in for a naso uh, nasogestional tube or an fg placement if we are suspecting that the contamination of the sepsis is more and the patient is more likely to stay on a nutritional enteral or a parenteral nutritional support for a long time i would prefer an fg in this patient uh, uh, if we are waiting uh, for a longer duration so i don't know check about this but uh, i'm not sure whether uh, if if you can place a naso jejunal tube uh, or whether you should go for feeding jays ajay what would you both both the options so that's what dr ajay also says that if if you have the expertise radiological obviously you would try to avoid an endoscopic placement here because that may increase the perforation so uh, a good uh, radiologist under fluoroscopic control uh, should be able to pass a guide wire across the site of perforation into the stomach and post pylori so post pylori feeding not nasogastric because that has the risk of regurgitation uh, but post pylori feeding definitely uh, because nutrition will be an important part especially if you are going to manage the patient on conservative lines okay so suppose we decide to operate as you said patient comes immediately after the uh, uh, event uh, there is no systemic sepsis patient is otherwise uh, well preserved what what will be your surgical approach so uh, uh, there are two ways that we can approach this patient either it can be through a video assisted thoracoscopic surgery for uh, for first uh, drainage and identification of the site of perforation or we can go with a uh, left posterior lateral open technique here uh, i would first uh, prefer a vats in this patient to do a proper lavage drainage and identify the site of perforation see for the margins of the perforation whether they can be repaired properly uh, a primary repair can be attempted in this case or not if the margins are low unhealthy devitalized or it is a long uh, perforation then i would just come out with a drain placed in the uh, periesophageal cavity if the perforation is amenable for a repair then uh, we can attempt a primary closure with uh, probably a omental or a fundic wrap around the uh, fundic wrap around the perforation if it is in the lower side uh, uh, if it is in the lower thoracic cavity so again the length of the perforation is not that important it is the the uh, uh, the uh, edges of the perforation whether they are healthy or not whether you think your sutures will hold or not okay and you said that you will do a video assisted thoracic procedure so how will you get the momentum you said i will patch it with momentum uh, no sir i would like to first uh, start with a uh, minimal wads uh, procedure if it is amenable to repair then i then i would uh, do an open uh, open so can you use anything else suppose you don't suppose the perforation is all in the intrathoracic part of the esophagus and you are you have repaired it uh, how would you repair before that how uh, would you repair so uh, provide a pds uh, such, uh, intermittent pds sutures uh, i would prefer what size whenever whenever you are asked a question how would you repair or how would you do an osmosis in the first sentence itself you should say interrupted or continuous single layer double layer what suture what needle all this you should say in the first instance yes now tell me how would you repair it will, it would be a double layer interrupted uh, repair with a pds 30 uh, 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 interrupted uh, continuous may i interrupt Sorry, interrupted interrupted double layer is of agus mein double layer kahi bhi karte hain even elective mein nahi karte uh, so some books uh, have mentioned that it if possible then mucosa should be taken first and the second layer of uh, muscle should be the esophagus intrathoracic esophagus mein to koi serosal covering hogi nahi abdomen mein to fir bhi hoti hai double Oh, okay. I am not sure. Yeah. 
I'm not sure. Just, just check on that. But Dr. Ajay also says that uh, you do a single layer interrupted 3O PDS. That uh, I agree. Uh, okay. Uh, so, uh, so suppose you don't. Huh, I'll come to that. Suppose you don't enter into the, you don't have to enter into the abdomen. The perforation is all intrathoracic. So other than momentum, there is nothing else which you can use to bolster your uh, repair. Uh, plural uh, flap can also be taken for this thing. Pura, pericardium, pericardial muscle, muscle, all these things have been used. So yes, sir. now uh, there is a question which. Uh, uh, so is there any non-surgical option? Uh, North and uh, endoscopic options have been evaluated for these. Uh, it can be an over the clip or uh, over the clip repair for small. Over the, the same, scope. Over the scope. Over, sorry, over, over the, the scope. Uh, over the uh, over the scope uh, clips could be used. And uh, there is also Any other option? Of endovascular. Uh, this negative section drainage can also be attempted. And then Any stenting can option? stents uh, yes. can be placed as well. Yeah, so you should know that now for small perforations who are presented early after you have drained the pleural cavity and even for anastomotic leaks which are accessible endoscopically both esophagogastric or colorectal there are endoscopic options available which include as you said large clips so these are over the scope OTS clips which are basically like a, 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 a the, the claws of an alligator or a whatever animal that uh, they are large clips, so they can close uh, even a full thickness perforation. And then you have a stent placement. What kind of stent will you place if you want to treat it with a stent? Uh, so it would be a covered stem. Uh, uh, covered, covered removable stent. stent. Removable covered stent. removable stent. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and third, as you said, that there are some reports of this uh, vacuum uh, suction management Sorry. also. Ajay, anything else you want to add? Yeah. Any other uh, faculty member wants to add anything? Any student wants to ask anything? Rajendra, are you still there? Yeah, I'm there. I just wanted to ask him Any? why he has not yes. mentioned a plural pair intercostal muscle uh, buttressing uh, as a buttress. He did. He, did he, uh, he wants fundus. Hint. He's talking about gastric only, hmm. intra abdominal esophagus only. So. Okay, any student? And students, Dr. Anand has so many times instructed you that please identify yourself. Don't join as iPhone 1, iPhone 2. Please identify everyone. And uh, on, uh, I hope you have received the message that on 22nd, 23rd evening, we are arranging a liver, uh, living donor liver transplant masterclass online, 7 to 9 p.m. Uh, so very soon we will be putting up the program, but uh, note the date and time, 22nd, 23rd of June, 7 to 9 p.m. We will be putting the pro detailed program and the link uh, on the tutorial website. Okay, so Dr. Ajay is adding that uh, another option is that through the, through the perforation or through a fresh site? Through the perforation, place a wide bore T tube and then repair over it so that you decompress the yes, uh, okay. So, But okay. it is argued Just that they might not be. Uh... You can also try glue in glue uh, as a method of treating an esophageal perforation or an anastomotic leak. That's also supposed to be quite effective. Okay. And Dr. Bigyan Acharya says esophageal exclusion as the last resort. See, that would be required if you have to go in for whatever reason for a late presentation of a very large perforation with contamination. So in that situation, conserva conservation is uh, more important that you just drain the pleural cavity. If required, you drain the mediastinum and uh, see what happens to this perforation and uh, ensure a nutritional uh, port, which is either NJ or FJ, uh, rather than uh, doing uh, exclusion at that stage. Because the primary aim is to uh, treat the sepsis and to maintain nutrition. And then later on, what happens to the esophagus, whether it strictures or not, that would decide the definitive management later. Okay, I think we will close. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Ayush.